Well, 343 just released the sandbox update, guys, and for the quick short of the whole thing, the buffs are going to be the commando rifle, plasma pistol, the pulse carbine, and disruptor are all getting improved with the winter update. But there are some nerfs being the battle rifle, frag grenade, and snap sliding being removed. Now, if you want to know how they're getting buffed or nerfed or removed and the reason why behind it, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details so finally the plasma pistol is getting a buff in halo infinite i'm very excited about this and they said that basically what they're gonna be doing is increase the shot damage from 20 to 28 so each individual shot will be doing more damage increase charge shot angular velocity from 20 to 35 degrees per second so it will be flying through the world faster and increase charge shot guided angular velocity at rest from 50 to 70 degrees per second so this really should increase the ability of the charge tracking of the plasma pistol which is definitely needed and also just in case you need to span some shots to get some extra damage in there next here we have the pulse carbon we've been talking about this one a lot that's 343 did mention this as well and they said that they increase guided angular velocity at rest from 25 to 35 degrees per second then they also decrease the angular velocity from 50 to 30 degrees per second increase targeted lading fraction from 0.35 to 1 and increase guided projectile air radius from 0.2 to 2.22 degrees essentially yeah with the pulse carbine and the plasma pistol that the tracking should be better and looks like the velocity of the bullets will be traveling quite a bit faster as well but we also have another buff the commando rifle is getting improved which i thought was in a pretty good state but we've here we have some new updates saying that increased headshot prioritization angle from zero to 0.1 degrees so a little bit of improvement there increased bullet magnetism angle from 1.25 to 1.3 increased aim assist angle from 5 to 6.25 and decreased minimum air angle max from 0.8 to 0.6 degrees essentially it's going to be easier to land your shots and should be feeling a little more sticky when it comes to your aim when it comes to the commando rifle another buff is going to be the disruptor which i know we don't really see too often but they're really only increasing the magazine size ammo count from 10 to 12 so nothing too crazy there on to the nerfs we have the br75 is getting a nerf guys which i would agree definitely could use a little bit of a nerf it's a little too good not too crazy but just a little too good saying headshot prioritization angle reduced from 0.25 to 0.2 Bullet magnetism angle reduced from 2.4 to 2.2. Bullet magnetism range reduced from 20 world units to 18 world units. Bullet magnetism fall off range reduced from 12 world units to 10. Again, these are all like very small incremental changes, but enough to where you would notice it while you're playing. The frag grenade is also getting a nerf as well. The only thing that's really changing is they increase the detonation timer by 0.2 seconds, so they're adding. 0.2 seconds on that detonation timer in there so i would kind of agree with that frag grenades are pretty good in this game a big thing though i know i'll see a lot of people especially in the more movement side of the community of halo is snap slide if you guys don't know what snap sliding is it allows you to do basically a curb slide on any kind of ramped surface which is we shown an example here by milkway as you can see right here you're just doing these crazy kind of slides where we're basically like a super kind of uh, curb slide compared to just like a regular curb slide right here so you can see why it's very important to kind of take this one into consideration compared to the curb slide which i think is a really cool mechanic that should be added in but when you're doing these kind of movements like this it's a little much you get really launched across the map and they do state this within the blog that doing a snap slide kind of breaks the map flow of what we're seeing with halo infinite now i know that a lot of people within the community themselves have definitely said that they do not like having sl snap sliding being removed but again these are more of the people i'd say are very much in tune with the movement mechanics of halo and making content off of it more than just uh regular players that's i mean I, I put a poll about this on tw my twitter as well and with just shy of 500 votes on twitter if you guys haven't followed me on twitter make sure to follow Ke at kevin cool x halo you get to follow me there for all my recent halo news and stuff like that saying is removing snap sliding a from halo infinite a good idea and 61 percent essentially said yes it's a good idea i do feel like a lot of these people though kind of voted on this saying yes as in almost a way to kind of like spitefully you know 
throw a middle finger up to all the pro players who are probably the people who complain about this the most. At least judging from the comments that I read, that's kind of the impression that I got. I mean, this is what 343 said directly about snap sliding when it comes to Halo Infinite, saying, well, curb sliding and its current use have been fun to watch and hasn't been interrupting gameplay flow too much. On the other hand, snap sliding allows players to make jumps that could truly break the game flow, which again, it's up to their interpretation of how they feel that the game flow really is. Though I don't really see snap sliding in my matches. It's a very niche community that can really pull this kind of stuff off as it is very difficult. Adds a bit of a skill gap, but sometimes things are just kind of busted according to 343, and that's kind of how they view snap sliding compared to curb sliding. Now we have some future updates past the winter update that they actually talk about when it comes to desync, aiming, and also a whole lot more. So they actually go into pretty good depth about desync. But first they talk about the mouse and keyboard input settings right here. And we did talk, cover this previously on the channel here, guys. We heard news about this saying that 343 is looking to take feedback in as saying feedback emerged around how aiming and tracking players feels on mouse and keyboard. We know there's room for improvement and some updates are on the way. So this will be changing as someone who likes to play on mouse and keyboard from every shooter besides Halo, I definitely will check this out. And also Red Reticle will be returning to Halo Infinite as we covered previously on the channel here. So if you want to stay up date with Halo guys, just make sure to subscribe guys. It's really just the best way to do it. Now saying if a plethora of cheats pop up because of this, we may need to reconsider. But until then, we're excited to see how it feels on PC, which again, they stated the reason why there is no Red Reticle range is because they're afraid of cheaters. Uh, but you know, there's been cheaters doing other things as well in the game that are way worse than having Red Reticle in there. Uh, the Red Reticle is really important to know what range you're in. So then you can actually anticipate what kind of damage you're putting on players, you know? Uh, scroll wheel issue when it comes to mouse keyboard as well, saying that using a scroll wheel to swap weapons sometimes would double swap, essentially doing like a YY mechanic on the controller. So looking to fix that up right there. Uh, a walking key with mouse and keyboard as well. Uh, essentially, it sounds like what they're looking to do is like, what you can do actually in Call of Duty, which I find quite interesting, is that you'll be able to change the walking speed of your character because obviously with mouse and keyboard, you can either 100% on or off. Compared to controller, you can gradually get to that 100% full speed. Like I can imagine something like this happening with Halo Infinite, which I couldn't imagine being too crazy to implement, but we just have to wait and see. Now 343 finally addressed the big elephant in the room. d has been plaguing Halo Infinite. Well, since launch, it did get an improvement once they started to prioritize ping when it comes to their matches, but it still lingers quite heavily. Now, desync has been used as a blanket term for when things don't exactly work out as they should be online. So they've mentioned desync as in saying like players and positions are just, and the client and the player and the server are just not lined up properly. Blank shots, uh, getting around, shot around corners and stuff like that, and ghost melees are all addressed within this. So let's cover it now. Essentially, 343 says that they're happy to say that we're testing some improvements for a few different bugs that were resulting in the melee registration issue. So we're looking forward to that. Now, interesting thing about the blank shots issue here, they state that, that we've mentioned it above, but the fake reload issue is one reason contributing to why players could have blank shots. We know there are other instances of blank shots not counting aside from fake reloads and we'll be going after those too, but we're happy to be bringing this out first. Personally, I've never really experienced a fake reload, but maybe I have and just never really noticed it and just kind of was wondering why my shots weren't registering. Figured it was desync or something like that. We actually have vehicle desync that we've seen some clips about it on Reddit as well, talked about here. Then you can expect some targeted vehicle desync improvements in the next update. So that's gonna be fantastic, obviously. Also state that in addition to those networking improvements, improvements, we have also got a few more balance updates that we'll be bringing after the future update as well. So this isn't just going to be it guys, we're going to get some more stuff coming in. But a big thing that can be changing here guys, the drop shot, not from Call of Duty, from Halo right here, saying that the drop shot is the ability basically where when you're playing the game, instead of switching to your weapon, you press drop weapon, which actually swaps to your secondary faster. Now, what they're going to be doing with this right here, as they stated within this blog, is that they're going to be basically making the drop shot ability the same amount of time as pressing Y to switch your weapon. So basically going to be canceling out. I feel like it'd be only useful now for just literally just dropping your weapon rather than giving you a tactical advantage to do better in the match. So. 
the, I'm kind of iffy on that one. I kind of like that mechanic, but it definitely would play a factor when it comes to saying like doing like the plasma pistol shot, special kinetic, or like the Mangler two tap switch to a battle rifle kind of thing. So that'd be definitely important to see how that plays out. The thruster is getting a nerf here as well. Basically saying that the thruster has definitely been a little bit too much in favor of the user when it comes to 1v1 engagements and that we plan to, on adjusting this a bit to make sure it's no longer tipping the scales too far in one direction as in the person who uses it. Now, I've come across people who have used the thruster. Uh, I remember when I played against Snakebite in the 2v2 tournament and he always had thruster on. I was like, oh, that's how you use thruster and it's very useful. You can really take advantage of people. So I can imagine the thrust distance being a little bit shorter here. Another thing that's gonna be changing is the energy sword guys, which is gonna be incredibly important. This could actually ruin the GA that's going on for the sword in ranked halo and saying right, now, saying right now, if both players are no shields and they melee each other, the player with the energy sword will survive with a sliver of health. With this upcoming update, we'll update the melee logic so both players trade melees and die which could help prevent an energy sword from just tearing up teams through without trading which i think was the biggest issue with the energy sword why it was being ga'd and competitive so this is really important to see i actually really do like this change because with, with the addition of sword grapple uh sliding and sprinting it's a little too powerful i'd say especially on maps like recharge with a like much more tighter court close quarter kind of action that happens right there uh, so this is a really good change. I really like that, that sword change right there. Uh, they also talk about the competitive weapon respawn timers. Essentially, they're saying that they'll be making those weapon timers a little bit longer. So then the weapons that are a little bit too powerful will be spawning a little bit less, creating less snowball effects within the matches as well, which is really nice to see. One thing I think is really important that they didn't really mention at all was the Mangler. The Mangler has been GA'd from competitive Halo and also generally not really used in rank because of the GA. Uh, for pretty much the entirety of Halo Infinite. I mean, there was like the first like tournament that people started using it after that, like since like February, it wasn't, they didn't mention about removing this at all. Uh, I don't think the Mangler really deserves to be in the ranked game modes at all. I think if you just replace it with a sidekick, with one, you get a chance to use the competitive team sidekick camos, which would be fantastic. And I think it just helped bring a little bit more balance and utilize the weapon a little bit more. Uh, we'll see how it plays out when it comes to ranked. If the GA continues, which I'd be shocked to see that the Mangler stays within Halo Infinite by the time uh, the new season starts with in February. But overall, I really like the changes that they mentioned within this blog. I think a lot of them were in the right spot when it comes to helping improve these weapons a lot. I think the battle rifle was a little too good. So I'm glad to see that change. The frag range was a little too good. Uh, snap sliding I thought was a bit of game breaking, not crazy game breaking because so few people could pull off because it was so difficult. But I do, after watching some of those clips that I've seen online, I can understand why they decided to remove it. I'm glad the sword got nerfed so now you can do that trade rather than like that annoying block thing that we had back in reach uh so then it would be one way to kind of help counter it hopefully the ga gets lifted because of that little feature right there i know that's something i mentioned that uh snake bite mentioned actually about why the sword is ga it's because of the whole thing or it really isn't much of a counter and how powerful it is on a lot of close quarter maps where it's featured on in ranked and also the drop shot I like that feature, honestly. I think it's a cool thing to implement into the game. I can understand why they got rid of it because it might be a little too advantageous for players. I mean, I definitely have it mapped to my controller as like a thing to do on the back panel of my Elite controller. I guess I might have to start removing it. And I think it's a little bit better for just general gameplay continuity to have that drop weapon feature just be a drop weapon rather than a faster way to swap. Of course, it is a give and a take. There's a risk and reward to the whole thing. Uh, so I kind of like the feature, but I can understand why it's been removed for just kind of continuity of gameplay. Now there have been massive changes made to the progression within the Halo Infinite. Challenges completely overhauled. Match XP finally revealed. If you want to know about those details, check out this video right here. Thank you very much for watching. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.